please subscribe. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to get your cinematic. Obviously, it's up to you what cinematic you get. I'm going to sort of do roughly the same as what Flea does, so I can um, show you what it will look like as close as I can. So I'm just going to use roughly the same thing that Flea does. I'm going to go and crank and create it for a bit, and then I'm going to just sort of uh, film, like record it in replay mode. So once I've done that, I'll come back when I'm in replay mode. Okay, so now I've got my uh, replay mode file ready. I'm just going to go into career and then into replays. And I'm going to find the file that I used. It's just the one at the top because I just did it just then. You can rename it if you're going to come back to it. I'm just going to call it um, intro. If you're going to come back to the file, then rename it. You you could uh, use the file from a 1v1 if um, if you want. But I don't have any uh, at hand at the moment. So I'm just using, I'm just going to, I just cranked in creative for a bit. Um, and then I'm going to use this. You just want to load into the file and you want to find where everything's been built. So I'm just going to come towards the end where everything's been built. Come to where my character's right here. I put myself in the water so that I didn't, um, I wasn't in the way. And then you're just going to go drone free and you're just going to, what you're going to do is you're going to find a spot. You're going to come over to settings and you're going to change everything to epic. You want to also make sure that show FPS is off so that you don't have a green FPS counter in the top. And what you're going to do is you're going to zoom out a little bit, I reckon, like this. You're just going to follow the builds up like this by holding a left and E if you're on keyboard. And then I don't actually know what it is to go up on controller. I'm guessing it's probably like A or something. But yeah, so you're just going to go to go to the left and then hold the up button to make sure that makes you go up and you're just going to pan around the builds. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase the drone speed so that it's a little bit easier. I'm going to go to a two. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more like this. And I'm just going to start going like this. So I think that's going to do for now, because what I'm going to do when I go to the editing software is I'm going to slow it down. But yeah, I'm just going to use what I've got there. I basically just did it a few times. You're going to want to do it a few times until you get it right. If you're on controller, it should be a little bit easier because you uh, you don't have to worry about precisely moving your mouse. You can just hold down to the right and it will turn in a circle, which is really useful. But now we've got the uh, cinematic. I'm going to hop into the editing software. I'm going to actually show this for Premiere Pro and I'll see you there. Okay, so now you're in Premiere Pro, you just want to drag in your files. Now I've got the cinematics in. I'm going to cut it down to size and put it on the timeline. So to do that, you just want to uh, click on the double click on the clip on the left and it will come up here. So anyway, now what you want to do is you want to find where you uh, get the cinematics. So I'm going to go from this one. So I'm going to go from about here. And then I'm just going to go all the way up to the top like this. Perfect. And then I'm just going to drag it on to the timeline. But anyway, now we've got this in, we're going to time remap it to a song. I'm going to go and uh, grab a song and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so now I've got a song in there. I'm going to start trying to time remap it. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the clip. I'm going to right click and then we're going to come down to show clip keyframes and turn on time remapping and then click on speed. And then I'm just going to hold down alt and I'm going to scroll up right next to my uh, clip and it will bring this up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it to 50% speed so that it's a little bit slower. But what I'm going to do now is because I don't need the audio track, I'm going to right click click unlink and then click on the audio track and click backspace and now there's no audio track there because we don't need it and this is what we've got i'm going to come over to about here and i'm just gonna crop it because i don't need that bit i'm going to end it like this so i'm going to crop the song back with it as well so now i've got it roughly where i want it to and i'm just going to sync it with the song i'm going to time remap sync it with the song i've got a few beats that i wanted to do it to so to do that you just want to listen to your song quickly <laughs> So I'm going to do it to this beat right here, this beat right here, and I think it's uh, this one here. What you can do if you want is you, if you uh, click M on your keyboard, it places a marker. So what you can do is you can find where you want it to go, where you want your marker to go, and you can place one. I don't need a marker at the start, though, because that's obviously just where the song starts. If I just do that, it should be fine. I'm going to put a marker right here on that beat, and I'm going to come over to, I think it's here, and put a marker as well. So I'm just going to put a time remap here, a time remap here, and a time remap at the start, just to show you. So what you want to do is you want to press control and then click on the middle line right here, roughly near where you want your time remap to be. And then you just want to zoom in a bit like this. And you just want to come before the time remap at the start of the clip. This is the one for the start of the clip. And then you just want to bring it up to about uh, 300 or something, or maybe 500. It depends on the speed of your clip. I'm going to do it to 500. And then you want to zoom in as much as you can, really. And you just want to bring the pin head outwards like this and then bring it to the start of the clip. So it's sort of at the start of the clip, it's going down. And I'm going to go six keyframes and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to ease it and to ease it you just want to click on the one of the pin heads and then you just want to click on this little uh, arm in the middle the top arm and just drag it to the left like this and that eases it and then just bring this to the start and then it should ease from the start so it looks like this so it sort of goes quick and then slow and i'm going to show you how to do the same thing here and to do that you just want to place another marker right here so control and click on the line and then drag this out and then where your marker is you want to increase the speed to i'm going to go back to 
I'm going to go to 400 this time. You want to play around with what speed you go to and then drag it towards the marker and then place another keyframe here, drag it out, pass the marker a couple of frames and then bring this back down to 50% again or 100%. It depends what your what yours is on by default. I've put mine on 50% because my cinematic was quite quick. And then what you want to do is you want to do the same easing thing that you did before. So just bring this to the right, bring this to the left, bring this out like this. So it sort of goes quick and then slow. So it should look like this. And then you just want to do the exact same thing on every single keyframe and then it should all be good. So I'm just going to do that and I'll be back in a second. So now I've done it on all three keyframes. This is what it looks like. Now we have this, we want to add the text. So to add the text, all you have to do is you have to come over to the left where it says the little T or you can just press T on your keyboard and you want to click on it and then you want to click on the screen and then type your text. So I'm going to have two different things. We're going to have one that says T-Mill and the other one's going to say presents and it's going to transition between them. I'm going to show you how to do the transition that Flea does with the spin. So to do that, you just want to drag your text to size. I'm going to have it do it on the beat. So on the time remap, it's going to switch text because I think that makes a lot of sense to have the text change on the beat. And now we're going to, I'm going to show you what font uh, Flea uses as well. So if you want the font, just go to graphics, click on your text and then just come to a text where it says this. You want to come down and you want to choose uh, Bebas. Now, if you don't have this font, I'll leave a link in the description to get it. So you just want to grab this font from the link and then you just want to align this to the center by pressing the align and transform. Make it size it up so it's uh, roughly this size in the middle of your clip. And now you've got your text. What we want to do is we want to make it blend with the background though, like fleece text. And to do that, you just want to click on the text. You want to go to editing up here. And you want to come down and you'll come down to opacity right here and to blend mode and you want to change the blend mode to overlay this is fairly blended right now but i'm going to show you how to change that in a second but what you want to do now is you want to do the transition so the spin transition to do the spin transition you just want to come to effects again you want to come to effects up here and type in transform and then under distort you want to drag transform on like this then you want to come to effect controls over here come all the way down to the transform that you just dragged on not the transform that's on by default the transform that you just dragged on because this one is slightly different and then you want to come to rotation. You want to place a keyframe at the start and have this at 180. And then you want to go roughly, I'm going to go 16 frames in, but it's up to you. And then put this to zero again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one frame ahead and then do another keyframe also at zero. This is important later. And then you want to come to the end and you just want to do the same thing, but have the final keyframe be minus 180. So we're going to go minus 180 at the end. And I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then put this to zero and then put another keyframe to the left and have this also on zero. OK, so now what we want to do is we want to ease the keyframes a little bit. So to do this, you want to zoom in. You want to come to the keyframes up here and you want to click on the second keyframe that you have. So this is the first one. This is the second one. And you want to change it to a continuous bezier. This is the reason that we have the second keyframe afterwards, because we, we're going to have this one, this keyframe here and this keyframe here is beziers. And if you have two beziers, then it will make it move in between, but we want the text to be still in between. So you have to put linear keyframes between them to stop it. It's a little bit confusing, but if you do it, it'll be fine. So just, just play along. So now what you want to do is you want to click on your continuous bezier like this. And you want to come over to the left where there's a little drop down. Click on this, and then you'll see a, a line here with a little um, sort of tool. And you want to just click on the end and just drag it, so like this, so that you can see that it goes sort of quickly goes down and then slows out, and it will look like this. So as you can see, it sort of goes quickly and slows out. So it looks really nice. You can increase the uh, amount of time between the transitions. So maybe I want it to be a little bit longer. I can do that. So yeah, I'm going to leave it like that. I think that looks nice, actually. You just want to do exactly the same with the other side, but um, make this one the bezier and make it go slow at the start and then quick at the end. So like this, quick, then slow, slow, then quick. That's basically all you need to know. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make it have motion blur as well. So to do this, you want to come down to shutter angle. You want to turn off use composite shutter angle and you just want to increase this. I'm going to increase it all the way to 360, but it's up to you where you put it to. But this is what this looks like. But there you go. But basically, what you want to do now to make it a little bit more solid, a little bit more visible, is just copy your text exactly. So to do that, you just want to hold Alt on your keyboard and then click and drag your text above it and then let go of left click before you let go of Alt. And then now the text is a little bit more uh, visible. So now what we want to do is we want to just copy the text by pressing Shift and then clicking on both the text and it will highlight them both. And then we want to do the same thing as before with holding down alt and then dragging them and then let go of them just next to it. And now you want to just change what it says on these texts. So I'm going to change it to presents. If the text moves, don't worry about it. Just uh, align it again. Go to both texts and align them like this. Click on it and then align it. And now they're both in the middle. And this is exactly the same as the other text. Obviously, if you want this one to be shorter, for example, I do because I want it to end here. What you can do is you can just come into the keyframes by going to effect controls on the top one. And then just finding where you want it to end and then just drag in the keyframes like this. So the final keyframe is on that, just like this. And then I'm going to, instead of doing the same thing for the bottom one, I'm just going to delete the bottom one and then paste the top one onto the bottom one and it 
now they're exactly the same. And then I'm just going to come to the end of the clip. I'm just going to drag this here. And now it should have a smooth transition between the text. So I'll show you what this looks like. So there you go. And now we're just going to show you how to do the background. So what Flea has in the background that a few people have pointed out and asked me to do a uh, tutorial on, he actually uses S underscore film damage. I've shown this a lot of times. I do say it a lot that it's a really good effect. It is a sapphire effect. If you don't have sapphire, you can't follow along with this bit. But you could probably find like an old film grain thing if you want to try and stick that on and try and put it as an overlay. But for now, if you have sapphire or if you don't have sapphire, get sapphire. Okay, but before you actually put it on, what you want to do is you want to nest your clip. So to do that, you just want to right click on your clip and then click nest. This is so that the time remapping doesn't affect the film damage, but it probably won't matter too much, but that's just something if you if it annoys you a little bit. So put film damage on your nested clip now and then just turn everything off. So the grain, the stain, the hairs, the scratches, everything apart from the dust density. So turn it all off apart from the dust density. I'm going to try, I'm just going to play around that. I'm going to put it to seven, I think maybe. So yeah, I think this is roughly what Flea has at. So yeah, this is basically all I wanted to say, and I hope you enjoyed.